So why do we believe that red meat causes colon cancer? I'll tell you why. Let's start this story with the 2015 IARC, International Association for Research on Cancer, which is a WHO working group, report on red meat and cancer. That is where most of our misconceptions regarding red meat and cancer come from. Let me tell you the story of the IARC working group from 2015. I'm getting most of this information from David Clurfield. He was one of the members of the 22 member IARC working group. And he wrote a very interesting editorial, what is the role of red meat in a healthy diet? So as David details in this paper, and as we know historically from the 2015 IARC report, and then the subsequent 2018 report, which is in much more detail, the IARC committee was 22 members that was convened in France in 2015. This was a self-selected committee. Members could appoint themselves. And as David says in the paper, most of the members of this committee had spent their whole careers studying the relationship between meat and other foods and cancer, suggesting that there may be some intrinsic bias with these researchers in general from the very beginning. The researchers looked at over 800 articles for inclusion in their summary report and excluded all of them but 14 observational studies. This means 786 studies were excluded. They don't give any explanation of why. And this included all of the interventional animal studies. This included the two interventional studies that I detailed previously, which showed no change in cancer risk with decreased red meat. So these researchers excluded interventional studies in humans. They excluded animal studies with interventions. And they looked at 14 studies, all of which were observational. In the end, they declared that red meat was a class 2A carcinogen and that every 50 grams of meat that you eat per day increases your risk of colon cancer by 18%, giving a relative risk of 1.18, which is very low. So you would imagine that if they looked at 14 studies that were observational in this position paper, all of the 14 must have shown very significant correlations between red meat and cancer, right? No, not true at all. Of those 14 studies, this is crazy. Eight of them showed no association between red meat and cancer. The majority of the studies used for the position paper in the 2015 IARC judgment showed no association between red meat and cancer. So for those watching, I'll show you the actual IARC paper. The title is Carcinogenicity of Consumption of Red and Processed Meat. As I said earlier in this podcast, I'm not going to talk about processed meat, only unprocessed red meat. They did look at more than 800, they say, epidemiological studies. But as I mentioned earlier, many of the interventional studies were also ignored. They looked at 14 cohort studies in the end. Even the IARC researchers <laughs> said there was inadequate evidence in experimental animals for the carcinogenicity of the consumption of red meat and processed meat. So they excluded them <laughs> just because there was inadequate evidence in animal models of the carcinogenicity of red meat. They excluded those studies. They only used cohort studies as I said, in humans. So this is what it is, and it's why most of us have been led to believe that red meat is linked with cancer. But let's look at those 14 observational studies out of 800 that were considered in the report. Look at this. For those who are watching, here are eight of the 14 where there was no link found between red meat consumption and colon cancer. So the majority of the studies, eight of the 14, no link found. If you're watching on YouTube, you can look at all the references and see for yourself here. Furthermore, in five of the 14, there was a trend toward correlation with red meat consumption and colon cancer that was not statistically significant. In Western medicine research, if there's a trend, but the p-value is not low enough, that is, it's not statistically significant, we generally don't report it as a true correlation. Now, there's no causation here. We don't report it as a correlation because we don't know if this correlation was caused by chance. So let's just recap here. In 13 of the 14 studies from this IARC report, there was no statistically significant connection between red meat consumption and colon cancer. And this is what has been used by the mainstream media to insert into our brains the oft parroted notion that red meat causes colon cancer over and over and over. If you repeat a lie enough times, it becomes the truth, I guess. I've said this before. I believe that's from one of the Nazi communication ministers from World War II, that saying. 
So what's left in the IARC report? There's one study left. Out of the 14 studies they considered, 14 cohort studies, 14 observational cohort studies, there's one study left where there was a statistically significant correlation between red meat and colon cancer. Let's look at that study in detail. So here is the one study that shows this statistically significant correlation. It's called Dietary Risk Factors for Colon Cancer in a Low-Risk Population. The authors are Singh and Frazier. It is from 1998. What you find if you look at the study is that it is observational epidemiology done on non-Hispanic white cohort members of the Adventist Health Study in California from 1976 to 1982. Now, the Adventist Health Study from California was done in Seventh-day Adventists in California, mostly living in Loma Linda, California. This is a population of people I've spoken about before. Connected with this religious affiliation, Seventh-day Adventism is a leaning toward veganism and vegetarianism. People within this community generally do not eat meat for religious reasons. This is clearly a narrative that sets us up to have an unhealthy user bias. Because who in this community is going to eat red meat? People who are more rebellious. And this sets us up to have a healthy user bias. Who in this community is not going to eat red meat? People that are less rebellious, people that follow the rules, people that espouse the religious beliefs of this Seventh-day Adventist community. So what do we find in this study? If you look at the results, you find that the people who had the highest risk of cancers were those who had lower legume intakes and higher body mass. These associations, I'm reading from the paper now, raise the possibility that the risk due to meat intake is mediated by multiple mechanisms, one of which may involve red meat intake in a constellation of causal factors that produces higher plasma insulin levels. Basically, the authors are saying that the people who ate the most red meat were also the fattest and appeared to have the highest levels of fasting insulin. Well, does obesity have a risk of cancer? Yes, especially colon cancers. Does insulin resistance have a risk of cancer? Yes, absolutely, especially colon cancers. Is it possible that the people eating the most red meat were also the most fat, the most obese, the most insulin resistant, and the red meat had nothing to do with that? It was other health behaviors they were doing, seed oils, processed sugars, we can hypothesize about this all day long, that created states of obesity and insulin resistance, and that is where their increased risk of cancer came from. It is absolutely possible. And yet, this is the one study out of the 14 in the IARC monograph where there was a statistically significant correlation between red meat and cancer, and is based in a population where the risk of confounding is very high, especially unhealthy user bias. For the sake of completeness, you can consider this paper, Obesity and the Cancer Risk, recent review and evidence to corroborate the notion that obesity itself is associated with increased rates of cancer. And there are many other papers which corroborate the notion that diabetes is associated with an increased rate of cancer as well. Consider this table of meta-analyses of the relative risk of cancer in diabetic patients. Relative risks are pretty high, especially in liver and pancreas, but we can go by organs. Um, the relative risk of cancer in the liver is 2.5. Uh, the relative risk of colon-related cancers is 1.3 to 1.4. Um, clearly, rates of cancer are higher in diabetics, yet we are led to believe that it was the red meat in this one study that was the causative factor. You can see here from a 2015 paper that obesity is associated with cancer of the esophagus and of the endometrium for women, and also with colon cancer. So there's really no question that obesity diabetes, the insulin resistance syndrome is associated with cancer, thus making it pretty hard to draw any sort of causative inference from this one study out of 14 from the IARC report. And yet, as I've said earlier, this IARC monograph is the main thing that most people will look to to say the WHO says red meat is a class 2A carcinogen. So let's go a little deeper down the rabbit hole into the type of things that the IARC monograph left out. As I've said, this monograph looked at 14 cohort studies, 14 studies that were observational epidemiology, and glaringly left out observational studies like this one from Asians. The title of this study is Meat Intake and Cause-Specific Mortality, a pooled analysis of Asian respective cohort studies. 
This one looks at over 300,000 individuals and finds that an increase in red meat intake in Asian countries was inversely associated with cardiovascular mortality in men and with cancer mortality in women. That's a convenient thing for the IARC to leave out of their analysis. A 300,000 plus patient population in Asia where more red meat was associated with lower rates of cardiovascular disease in men and lower rates of cancer in women? What's going on here? Is red meat good for Asians and bad for us in the United States? No, it has nothing to do with this. We're all humans, we're all homo sapiens. Red meat should be good for all of us if we believe in evolutionary consistency of diet. What's going on here is the narrative in Asia is different than the narrative in the Western world. The Western narrative is that red meat is bad for us. So who eats more red meat? People that are more rebellious. In Asia, the narrative is that red meat is associated with affluence. So who eats more red meat? People that are more financially well off. And we know that a superior financial status is correlated consistently with better health outcomes. So there are many studies like this in other parts of the world where the narrative may be different that show different epidemiologic findings, but they're consistently ignored in the West because they don't fit the narrative that so many of these self-selected individuals on the IARC committee from 2015 appear to have been looking to advance. 